The main melee has come to a close, and what a weekend of Overwatch it was. This is some of the most exciting Overwatch we've seen this year, and things can only get better from here as we've crowned our first tournament champion. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Olaz, and welcome to the Overwatch League Weekly Recap. In this video, we'll be going over the matches from the main melee, including my predictions for the games that I made before the final four teams played. As such, there is a full spoiler warning for the games during the tournament, so if you haven't seen them, you may want to wait on this video. Now before we get into the games themselves, we do have some roster changes to talk about that have happened since the last video. First of all, the Guangzhou Charge have had some coaching changes, which is not something I talk about in depth as the coaching side of the league isn't something I'm super familiar with, uh, but it is not too surprising given the Charge's poor performance in the first few weeks. Hopefully this will push the Guangzhou Charge in a more positive direction going forward. Next, main support Neptuno from the Paris Eternal has left the team, being replaced by Dridro. Uh, now, Neptuno was quite the veteran player, um, but according to his tweets, he had felt that his performance was lackluster and not at the level he was happy with, uh, and so he decided to leave the team. Uh, this is a bit of a blow to the Paris uh, Eternal, who are also struggling, as Neptuno is a great main support. But his replacement, Dridro, does come from a very good European contenders team. Uh, the New Kings was the last one I believe he was on. Uh, and from the little I've watched of him so far, uh, he doesn't look too bad. Uh, it's hard to predict how sport, uh, supports will do in the league, uh, especially on the main support role, as it's a little bit uh, more quiet. There's not as many star plays. Um, but all, honestly, I don't see anything that indicates that Dridro can't handle the league. So as long as the Eternal can kind of gel with this new support, things should be fine. Uh, and now, the roster change that I'm sure most people are already familiar with, um, the Dallas Fuel have added the big boss himself, Pine, to their roster. Now, if you're new to watching the league, you may not know who Pine is, uh, but this is an absolute treat. Pine was on the New York XL uh, in Season 1 and is a very strong hitscan player, uh, favoring typically the McCree, but can also play the Widow in pretty much any hitscan. Uh, Dallas was already a very scary team without a dedicated hitscan, uh, and with Pine being probably one of the best, this addition is going to make Dallas very dangerous. Um, the one bad thing I see about Pine, though, is that he is incredibly aggressive. Uh, he takes very risky positions and uh, highly punishable positions. So if Dallas, uh, who's also shown that they can be an aggressive team, um, if, if Dallas can kind of handle that, then whether or not teams will be able to punish Pine is something that we'll have to wait to find out. Uh, and finally, off-tank Rhea from the Washington Justice has decided to retire, citing injury problems. Now, we haven't seen Rhea play this year, and honestly, we haven't seen Rhea play for a while, um, as Fury's been the off-tank for the Justice. Uh, but this loss is a little disappointing to me, because uh, I rate Rhea pretty highly uh, in the off-tank position. Um, now, Rhea was formerly on the Hangzhou Spark and didn't play much of the later half of last season, uh, also due to injury, so this was not really a surprise retirement. Uh, in all honesty, um, the Justice aren't really going to uh, be affected too much since they've not been playing Rhea, but it is kind of a sad loss. With the roster changes out of the way, let's move on to the final tournament of the May Melee. The four teams competing were the Shanghai Dragons and the Chengdu Hunters from the East Division, and the Dallas Fuel and the Florida Mayhem from the West Division. Now, my predictions before this weekend had Florida and Dallas winning in the winner's semifinals, uh, with Dallas beating Florida in the winner's finals. I had then predicted that Chengdu would once again beat Shanghai in the loser's semifinals, um, but would fall to the Mayhem in the loser's finals, leading to a Dallas-Florida rematch for the grand finals, with Dallas being the overall champions. While I wasn't too far off, um, but the Shanghai Dragons were the difference maker in reality. So starting with the winner's semifinals, we had the Shanghai Dragons go up against the Florida Mayhem. Uh, this game was intense, being decided after six maps with a draw on Hanamura, uh, and the Shanghai Dragons defeating the Florida Mayhem 3-2. to two. Uh, I had predicted that this would be a very close game, getting the scoreline ultimately correct, but I favored the Mayhem. Um, this game was so back and forth. Uh, each team had a lot of really good plays, with most of the players shining at different times. Uh, for the Mayhem, Yaki consistently looked great and clutched so many fights, with BQB also looking incredible at times. Uh, for the Dragons, Lip dominated some of the maps, uh, with Izayaki on the supports also doing a lot of work. Overall, this map and game came down to countering the other team, and ultimately Shanghai's teamwork just edged out Florida. Uh, Florida definitely looked the strongest on Rush, but still played a lot of dive. Uh, unfortunately for them, and OG especially, uh, the Dragons were extremely good at punishing the aggressive dives. Uh, Shanghai definitely had their weaknesses. Um, while they looked great on the dive comps, 
and lackluster on the rush tile. Um, they also threw up some interesting comps featuring double shields. Uh, this game definitely could have went either way, uh, but Shanghai was able to f hold off Florida due to some fantastic teamworks and make it to the winners' finals. On the other side, the Chengdu Hunters took on the Dallas Fuel, and this game was a lot more one-sided. I predicted that the Fuel would 3-0 the Hunters, and while the Hunters were able to get a map, still lost to the Fuel 3-1. Uh, this game made Chengdu look incredibly weak, uh, with Chengdu trying to force comps with Farah, which may have made sense since the Fuel didn't have a dedicated hitscan, um, but Chengdu decided to fight in odd locations and seemed to not really respect the skill or the comp of the Dallas Fuel. Uh, one thing in particular that I noticed was they tried to play Farah on Village in Nepal, and instead of taking fights from a distance, they wanted to take fights close close by where Dallas could punish it. Uh, and, and just kind of their the decision to fight in odd locations and, and whatnot just really, really hurt them, um, as well as bad positioning and alt usage. Uh, and in general, just not being able to finish fights decisively enough to win. Uh, Dallas came out of this looking incredibly strong. Uh, both DPS, Doha, and Sparkle looking great. Uh, especially, I can't stop singing the praises of Sparkle Symmetra. Um, but Feelers and Fielder also looked really good. Um, Chengdu did have some bright spots, especially Jimmy, when he was playing the Widow. And um, when... Chengdu played the double shield comp uh, the, that the Hunters ran on Blizzard World, which was the one map they won. Um, they looked really strong, thanks in part to Lieb's Hanzo, which was terrific. Uh, ultimately, the Hunters fell to the loser's bracket, and the Fuel moved on to the winner's final. The winner's final was another close match between the Shanghai Dragons and the Dallas Fuel, once again going to six maps, as the Dragons really like to draw on assault maps. Um, now, I originally predicted that Florida would be taking on the Dallas Fuel uh, for the winner's finals, but I did have Dallas winning in the end, and they still did against the Dragons 3-2. Uh, this was another back-and-forth game, uh, which was a hallmark of most of Shanghai's games this weekend, uh, with Dallas playing a lot of dive, which was a bit surprising, um, but with both Sparkle and Doha capable of playing the Echo, and oftentimes switching who was actually playing the Echo, um, this led to a lot of you know, both Echo Tracer and Echo Sombra comps, depending on Shanghai, what they were playing, and the map. Uh, ultimately, the big difference between the two dives uh, of the Dragon and the Fuel was the main tank, as Fate for the Dragons was much more likely to be on the ball, while Fearless for the Fuel, I don't think, ever played the ball other than to stall. Um, throughout this map, uh, Lip struggled on the Sombra. That was a big problem for the Dragons, um, which is something I've seen from even last year, uh, as he's really quick to build EMP, um, but his usage is pretty bad, uh, and that, that costs the, the dragons a lot of the time. Uh, another issue that Shanghai was running into was Li Zhejiang, uh, who seemed to be eager to swap to Lucio, uh, which is a comfort pick for him, uh, and he is a very good Lucio, but it's not a good pick, and him staying on the Lucio for too long kind of led the dragons to stall out and just kind of look bad. Um, Dallas, on the other hand, was incredibly clutch. I, I'm going to say this a lot. The Dallas team is clutch. They they win fights that they should should not. Uh, and, and a lot of times this was because they were using their ult smartly. Uh, and they also like to punish uh, when Shanghai would be aggressive uh, using their ults. They would punish just by waiting and then using their ults in response. Um, Shanghai definitely looked better when Lip was playing the Tracer. Uh, and that, again, Lip is a very good player, don't get me wrong. Um, just alt usage was kind of bad. And ultimately, the Dragons worked very well as a team. Uh, really good dives and punishing dives, all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, uh, Dallas was able to turn the fights and eventually took them down to move on to the Grand Finals. In the next game, the Chengdu Hunters took on the Florida Mayhem in the Losers Semifinals, with the losing team being the first team out of the tournament. Now, obviously, with my predictions being incorrect from the winner semifinals, I didn't have these two teams playing at this point, um, but I did have them playing at another point in my bracket, and for that game, uh, I had Florida winning 3-1 against the Hunters, and that's what happened here. Uh, in this match, Chengdu still looked uh, a little lost, playing some very odd comps, and despite winning a good number of fights with alts, uh, just did not know how to finish up everything, and like I said, they just looked lost. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, they had a lot of issues finishing the fights, and Florida knew how to stall the point uh, long enough to just turn things around. Uh, I think a lot of Chengdu's issues come from the fact that they want to play comfort picks. Um, Jinmu especially wants to push that Farah, and while he's an incredibly 
dangerous on the Farah, uh, and he got a lot of investments, the, the nano boost and pockets and all that kind of stuff. They just couldn't fit, win the fights outright. Um, Chengdu definitely likes Blizzard World, which was, once again, the map that they won. Um, but despite some bright spots from Leave, Chengdu really struggled with alt usage, and they had a lot of forced and unforced errors. Um, in particular, I remember a halted dragon. Um, they got halted out of a dragon strike that was just a really bad dragon because of that forced error. So that was good on Florida. Nothing against, uh, I believe it was Lee playing the Hanzo. But there was a lot of bad alt usage and just mistakes uh, from the Chengdu hunters. On the other side, the Florida Mayhem looked strong. Uh, DPS doing a lot of work, especially Yaki. I... I think Yaki's one of the best players uh, on the DPS role, and definitely he's one of the he he is the best player probably for Florida. Uh, he is incredibly clutch, and if he's still alive and healthy, uh, he can turn lopsided fights himself uh, consistently. So at the end of it, the Mayhem moved on to a rematch with the Shanghai Dragons, while the Hunters were knocked out. Now, this next game was the only game this entire weekend that was not close, not at all. Um, I'm not sure if the Mayhem were tired after dealing with the Hunters or if the Dragons were just ready for what the Mayhem were going to send their way, uh, but the Shanghai Dragons dominated the Florida Mayhem in the Losers' Finals 3-0. Uh, Florida did not look good at all in this match. Um, while the Dragons seemed to be breezing through the game, um, both Lip and Izayaki for the Dragons did well, regardless of the comps, and the game went the way it did, not so much for the strength of the Dragons, uh, but the weakness of the Mayhem. Uh, and don't get me wrong, Shanghai looked fine. I think Shanghai was a good team, uh, they looked like a good team, and they played like a good team, but Florida was consistently making mistakes, had terrible alt usage, uh, especially in the lap last map. Uh, now, this match was marked by the only significant technical troubles of the weekend, uh, as we missed the entirety of the Shanghai attack on Hanamura, uh, which despite holding the Mayhem at about 90-ish percent on point A, uh, nearly didn't get the win as Florida was able to hold this map into overtime. Uh, that being said, Florida still looked great on uh, the rest of the tournament, and hopefully they can mentally recover, because uh, I think that's mostly what happened. They just were mentally tired. Uh, and, you know, I, I think if they can recover and kind of work on that, um, they can be a top team. Uh, Shanghai, on, meanwhile, moved on to the Grand Finals for a rematch with the Dallas Fuel. The final match of the weekend was between the Shanghai Dragons and the Dallas Fuel, this time going to the first to four. And the winner, of course, being the champion of the May Melee. Now, I had originally predicted that Florida would be taking on the fuel, but while I got the teams wrong, I did get the score right, as Dallas would win 4-2 over the Dragons. This was an interesting game, as we saw a first from the fuel, a hit scan. Multiple times during this match, Sparkle decided to lock the legs and bring out Soldier 76, which it was not too bad. Uh, it looked actually pretty good. Uh, it was serviceable, definitely. But it's not a great choice given the meta. Um, but you play what you can play. Uh, throughout this match, Dallas clutched so many fights, and the overall fights were just so scrappy the entire time. Um, Dallas just could not be stopped. Uh, Dallas was looking to be held on a lot of points. Uh, Gibraltar was one of the big ones. Uh, and, and they would just find a way to win that last fight and move on. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the skill of Dallas players, more so than anything else. Uh, again, Fearless favored the Winston, which he looks really good on. Uh, and both Doha and Sparkle did wonders, playing a lot of interesting comps, including the not-so-often-seen uh, uh, Doha Genji. Uh, typically, Sparkle would play the Genji, but Doha actually brought it out, uh, and they played some Genji Tracer for a while. Um, but to be fair to the Shanghai Dragons, um, they also looked really good. Uh, the maps that they won, especially, especially they won decidedly. Uh, Lip was a real highlight the entire time, and when he was playing Ash and Widow, uh, he was popping off so much. Uh, and Shanghai lost some of the fights due to just poor alt usage, but for the most part, they didn't look bad. They were just worn down by the fuel and ultimately lost. Uh, the fuel just clutched out so many fights, then the Dragons, it, it was always to that last fight. So throughout the tournament, the Dallas fuel did look really strong, coordinated, and clutch, and that's what really won them this whole thing. And now, moving on to the next month, as games will be starting back up on the 21st of May for the qualifiers for the June Joust. Now, this month of Overwatch will be slightly different as Hero Pools will be in effect until a team is crowned champion once more. 
Two DPS, one tank, and one support will be removed from play, uh, which should make this meta a bit interesting. Now, the heroes have been randomly chosen already, uh, and for this month, both the Tracer and Sombra will be unavailable, as well as Reinhardt and Zenyatta. Now, this is unfortunate, as we're not going to see any rush comps this month, uh, which for a few of the teams, such as London and Atlanta, is really going to hurt. Uh, however, with both Tracer and Sombra out, the dive comps are also going to be interesting. Now, obviously, the meta usually depends on the map and the team, partially, uh, but I feel like we're going to see mostly dive, with both Ball and Winston being paired with D.Va or Sigma, um, partly based on the team, partly based on the map. Uh, some teams, such as Dallas, are going to obviously play the Winston, whereas other teams, such as Chengdu, will probably play more Ball. We're also going to see a lot of Ana, uh, typically with a Brig, potentially with a Mercy, depending on what the DPS play. Um, but I think that we could also see some Mercy back too, though unlikely. Uh, as for the DPS, I think we're probably going to see a lot of Echo, uh, paired with either an Ash or Mercree. Then again, I could be completely wrong, and we might see the return of Double Shield uh, Arisa Sigma comps with potentially May Reaper. Uh, it, it's really hard to tell. I, I do think that we'll see a lot of Ana if there is a lot of dive, because most teams are playing Ana already, um, so the Ana Brig with the exception of the Mercy with uh, an Ash. Uh, if the McCree gets played, then probably we'll see the Brig over the Mercy. There, there's a lot of who knows on this, so ultimately it should be really interesting. And with that, the May Melee is completed. Now, I know that this video is a bit late from the usual Wednesday I try to get these up by, but real life happened and I wasn't able to get to this. Apologies, but since there were no games this weekend, uh, being a bye week, no harm done. Uh, the next recap video will be on the 26th of May, after the league resumes, and I will do my best to get that video up promptly. Uh, with all that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, and if this is the type of Overwatch we can expect the rest of the year, this season is going to be fantastic. With that, I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!